So there is a new beta feature on Roblox and imagine that now you are able to perform union operations with code. So normally if you wanted to union two different parts, let's say you wanted to subtract this one from that one, you would just go into model, set this part as a negative part and then just intersect them. And now it would create a part that's an intersection. And it also has an intersection class name. And this is a beta feature that you don't have to enable from the file and then beta features because the feature itself isn't beta, it's the API. And before I jump into these examples right here, I kind of need to talk more about what this update is. And it's an inexperienced constructive solid geometry, which is CSG for short. And its API is now available in published experiences. So to go over it, here we have the API links and a presentation of what this really is. So here you can see that a person is performing basically a boolean operation on the parts. And this place is also available from this post right here. And everything is gonna be of course linked in the description. So here just have more examples how the code looks with different methods and functions. And also the places down at the bottom right here. So I'm just going to show these examples in this video. All of this is really interesting so I recommend that you guys check it out yourself. You have different technologies like incremental remeshing, which I believe is just a retopology tool, but it's nice seeing how it works. So let's just do a run test and see what everything here does. So you have no split and no substitution, which is just going to create this whole part operation instance. And you can see that it also removed the particle emitter. No split just means that this is not going to fall apart, like it did in this example. Then you have no split with substitution, and the substitution is keeping the particle emitter inside of the instance. And then with split and no substitution, it's going to separate this part into two part operations. So that's for the getting started. And now let me just show how the code looks like. So here you have the geometry service and also different options. So this is the first part, which is right here. And then you perform the operation with the P call. You have the geometry service and the subtract async call. Then the instance, which is this part right here. Then I believe a table of the instances that you want to perform the operations with. And then these different options at the end. So whatever this method returns, needs to be put into the workspace. And then you have the second model, which is right here, that you do the same, but you just change the options to split apart to false. And also same for the field model. So now I'm just going to move into a different place, because some of this stuff is really interesting. And also in the meantime, remember to subscribe and leave a like to support the channel. But let's just jump into the place number two. And I'm just going to change the base plate material because the brick one looks kind of ugly. But anyways, so this one gives you a lot more examples. You have the bridge that was shown in the preview right there. But let me just go over everything. So you have a subtractor, which is just this box right here. Then another, a laser gun. That actually works. And then an intersector. And also a bunch of different options, like changing the shape. Then rotation, making the tool larger, and then different modes. So right now this tool has set speed apart enabled. So I'm guessing that if I just go over it like this, yep, it's going to just break apart. But if I set it to pulse and then try to cut it, it's not going to fall. Then the substitute mode, which doesn't really have an example on this block. And then you have a union tree that I'm just going to chop down. Like this. And then of course we have the bridge example right here. I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of satisfying. And overall I'm kind of surprised how smoothly everything is working. I thought it would be much more resource heavy for Roblox, but yeah, it's actually a good sign. So let me set the split mode apart to false and break this one right here. And it's still hanging on despite not having any connections. And now what about the preserve constraints mode? So you're just going to destroy the constraints whenever you perform an operation on this. So yeah, that's for the bridge. And then there is a partially unioned tree. So let's see what happens if I just chop it down. Well, nothing much, but hey. 
So I'm able to just destroy these trees right here. But nothing's happening whenever I hover over these ones. Then we have the bridge single slab. Which I'm guessing that I can just cut like this. Yep. And then it's just going to fall apart. And then here is another tree. Then there is the six plates welded together, which I don't really understand this example. Maybe this one is just for the constraints, but I have the preserve constraints on falls and it's not falling apart. Okay, it fell apart now. A motor non-colliding cylinder and a cylinder with decal. So let's just see. Okay, this is kind of interesting. You can make pretty interesting stuff with this. And now let's see how this cylinder is going to behave. It just looks like I kind of just took a bite out of it. But I like how the material is still preserved on this union part. And I also forgot to see the other and the intersector. So hey, I'm actually also able to add more part. And I think I just broke it. So this is pretty fun. And what about the intersector? Oh, it just destroyed the whole thing. Same with here. So this is just going to leave the intersection between the tool and the selected object. Then there is the anchored pillar, which I'm just going to break. And then a simple block with decal, so let's see. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna push that because this one is just like giving epilepsy. Anyways, and there is also a client side that block. So this whole time it was saying that Studio was running at 60 FPS, but you were able to see that the operations were kind of laggy because of them basically just happening on the server. So let's see how it's going to behave on the client. And this one is way way smoother, maybe not with the other or whenever you make too much geometry. So yeah, I'm guessing that the more geometry the more lag it's going to get, because it's having trouble calculating the operations. And I would guess that the more I do it, the more likely it's going to crash. So let's just leave this cube alone. And I left these two really interesting places for last, so let's just get into them. So there is a laser tank and a normal tank. And let's see, can I shoot, let's say, this building? I actually can. I need to lower my volume a little bit. So yeah, my guess would be that the destruction simulator on Roblox is gonna get an update. Oh, and you can also steer the head of the tank. Can I somehow move it? Oh, I can move it up and down. So that's neat. Or just imagine an FPS where you are able to just break stuff in like Battlefield 3. But let's move from the boring normal tank to the laser tank. And let's see how this one does. So yeah, it's actually breaking stuff, but it's having trouble calculating some of it. I mean, I'm not really surprised, but hey. Maybe if I go like way slower. There is going to be a Roblox satisfying simulator. And let's see what else is there. There is the cube again and the stuff from the previous place. But I'm guessing that it's for the tools because this tank isn't doing anything. Oh, never mind. It's actually breaking stuff. Okay, this move cut was really just satisfying though. And there is also a pit of balls right here. So let's see if I can do something funny. Can I just like break this whole wall? I mean, I'm kind of able, like, a bit by bit. And there they go. <laughs> yeah, just going like this is really, really satisfying. And it's nice to actually see that we have something like this on Roblox. Can I do something like this? Hey, I actually can. And I'm just going to chop this tree down. Like so. Then there is also these houses. But yeah, some of this isn't really that smooth like previously and I'm guessing that's because of the distance of how far the laser is from the part, but also the complexity of the geometry. So if I go a bit closer to the wall and just start breaking stuff, yeah, it's just going to be way smoother than when the laser was a bit like further away. And I don't think there is a way of making the beam larger, but it will be kind of funny seeing just this whole part just being annihilated. So yeah, this technology and this place is really fun, but I'm going to be moving into a different place. 
and it's going to be the workshop one and in this one you are supposed to make wheels for this car and how you do it is pretty simple but it kind of can get a bit confusing because of its controls but i'm just going to do a quick little walkthrough so on the shop tool you first have this that you are able to just move and position and first you need to do a hole in the cylinder just like so but don't move it too far because it can just break this constraint right here and the whole thing is just going to fall apart okay but then you need to press on the change tool and now this is where you get the general thickness of the tire so you can change the width the angle a little bit and just change its x and z positions and now let's say that i wanted to cut this part out now and i need to change the tool for that and now I'm just going to make the first wheel by cutting it around this point. So I just press on cut. And it's going to be a bit laggy. Okay, and I'm not going to position this wheel yet because whatever you do so, it like magnetizes the car and the wheel to each other and it can kind of just be in the way. Then you can just cut the wheels again and we don't really want that. Back to this one. And I just change the angle a bit and move it right here. Then again, just change the tool, move it a bit back and then just press on the cut. And now we need to actually just apply the wheels and you do so with the left click and the right click. So the position of the red ball is going to be where the wheel is going to be attached from on one of these parts. So I'm just going to press right click to attach them on the back and the car didn't actually fly or anything, so hey, that's good. But I'm just going to move it a bit back from this point. And I just duplicated the wheel. But for this one, you just press on left click. And it moved the car a little bit, but hey. Now we should be able to just jump into it. And maybe drive around if we are able to just get out. I'm just going to move the car like this. And just hop back in. And I think I've made the back cars a little bit too big because they just want to move. So let me see if I can change something up. Okay, the whole car just <laughs> fell apart. Okay, but it's working on the front wheel. <laughs> Whee! Okay, let me try putting this one on the back instead. And let's see if this one is going to work now. Okay, I mean, kind of. I don't know what's going on, but the car is just not behaving properly. I'm not even going left. Why is it going left? Well anyways guys, this is basically going to be everything for this tutorial, I just wanted to show off this new technology that Roblox just added. And recently I need to say that Roblox has been coming up with pretty amazing stuff and updates. So I hope they are gonna keep going in this direction. But that's going to be everything for this tutorial. Remember to like and subscribe and you can also consider becoming a channel member. But yeah, hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.